Our next uh, presentation is single incision mini slings versus standard mid-urethral slings in surgical management of female stress urinary incontinence, systematic review and meta-analysis of effectiveness and complications, Mohammed Abdul Fattah from the University of Aberdeen. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, we are indeed honored by this opportunity to present the results of our project of an updated systematic review and meta-analysis for effectiveness and complication of single incision mini slings versus standard mid slings. I'm presenting this on behalf of my colleagues in the Scottish Pelvic Floor Network. This is my conflict of interest slide. For the purpose of this presentation, standard medullary slings means retropubic TVT and or transobturator tape. I'm not going to go through this because this has been discussed by Elizabeth fairly um, thoroughly. And for the purpose also for this presentation, single incision mini slings means any sling that is inserted through a single vaginal incision with no entry or exit ports through the skin. Obviously, they are different. They all have short lens polypropylene material tape. However, some of them are anchored. So unlike TVTs and tension-free vaginal tapes, they are not dependent in their post-insertion stability on friction with nearby ligaments and, and tissue. They depend on how strong and robust their anchors. And therefore, they have, there is, I all acknowledge heterogeneity from the start because not all of them have the same robust anchoring mechanism. Some of them also are adjustable, and the technique is different from obviously tension-free vaginal tape. They have been shown to, in case series, to have low perioperative morbidity, earlier recovery, and earlier return to normal activities. However, this may be of no value if they are not inferior or at least equivalent to the standard midurethral slings. Our earlier systematic review in 2011 in European urology have shown that they have inferior patient reported and objective outcomes when compared to standard meduristeral slings with 6 to 12 months follow-up. We recommended they should be only done in um, the context of research, and since then, over 20 RCTs have been published. They have been studying further types of single incision slings with more robust anchoring mechanism and more adjustability. Also, earlier studies have published their longer-term follow-up and, very importantly, TVT Secure, which is responsible for some of the inferior patient reported outcomes have been withdrawn from the clinical practice. So we updated our systematic review using the PRISMA guidance. We last updated our search in May 2013 which means that it was updated after the publication of the abstract book for ICS. And therefore, we had the permission of the ICS um, scientific committee to present the updated review, which will be slightly different from what you have in your abstract book. The primary outcome have been the patient reported and objective cure for a slash improvement rate, and also the um, cost effectiveness. We aim to present clinically relevant results, and therefore, we will show you subgroup analysis by the type of the single incision sling, and we will present the result of TVT Secure separately, which I'm not putting on the slides just because of the restrictions. These are the flow chart for our studies. We have looked at 691 records identified, and we have included 26 RCT with a mean follow-up of 18.6 months. This included a total of 3,000 women, seven RCTs for many arc, three RCTs for adjust, one for Ophera and one for Contashur, and one pilot study for Solex, and 12 RCTs for TVT Secure. They were studied separately. I apologize for the busy slide, but I would like to show you the subgroup analysis we were talking about. If you look at the patient reported outcome, all of it together, you will see that there is no significant difference or there is no evidence of significant difference. However, this have a trend toward better results or um, inferior results in the single incision slings. If you look at the adjust on their own, you might find that this doesn't um, concur. However, Mini-ARC and Ophera have been partially responsible for the lower results in the patient-reported outcomes with single incision slings. 
looking at the objective outcomes, you would get a similar story where many ARC is not having the same problem. However, Ofera have got inferior patient reported outcomes with a single incision. And obviously, the wide confidence interval for the SOLEX is just because it was a pilot small RCT. We also looked at quality of life and sexual function. We repeated the analysis against retropubic TVT and against transobturator tape separately. We looked at the operative time, and we found that they were significantly shorter in the single incision slings. We looked at the pain scores, which were significantly lower in the single incision slings. And the time to return to normal activities was, in average, seven days earlier in the single incision slings. And to work, as well, was quite earlier in the single incision slings. We looked at the risk of bias of these um, studies, and you can look into further details for the article online in European Urology. We concluded that we have limitations, that there are some RCTs where we didn't have enough data on their blinding, despite that we have contacted all the authors, and I'm very grateful for all of them that they, the vast majority of them have responded and given us their updated results. There were some incomplete outcome data which may lead to attrition bias. Only two studies reported on sexual function. Only three studies reported on quality of life using validated questionnaires. The follow-up is 18.6, which threatens that the results could be affected by the TVT secure story again if we look at the two to three years outcome. And obviously, the level of heterogeneity of the trials, making lumping them together is quite difficult to conclude from there. In summary, we concluded that on excluding of TVT secure, there was no evidence of significant difference in patient reported and objective success rate, complication rates, impact on quality of life and sexual function at 18 months follow-up. SIMS were associated with earlier recovery and earlier return to normal activities and to work. And one RCT showed that there could be substantive cost savings because of it being done under pure local anesthesia without sedation. The results should be interpreted with caution, and that's due to the trend toward better clinical outcomes with the standard major links, the relatively short follow-up, and the heterogeneity of the trials included. And I would refer you for full details of the trial if, of the study if you'd like further details. The way forward. In UK, we have recently secured funding for a national trial comparing the better performing single incision slings in this systematic review toward standard mid urethral sling. We're going to recruit 650 women, and that's for an adequately powered pragmatic non inferiority trial. This is led from University of Aberdeen. However, we have got 20 centers, 20 centers in UK that are collaborating. We're going to have three years follow up, and your help and participation will be appreciated. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the primary researchers who have spent the time and the effort looking after their patients, published their results, and very, very um, gratefully, they have given us all the results. Thank you very much for to them. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Mustafa. This paper is open for discussion now. Please come to the microphone, say your name, country, and profession. So you think that uh, three years will be enough, to, uh, enough time for follow-up to make sure that the, uh, on the effectiveness of the sling? Sorry, if I heard correctly, you're, to, you're asking about the three years. Is it enough as a follow-up period? Yeah. Is we will change true? after five years? We would love to get the funding for five years follow-up. We started by one year follow-up, and then we asked for, and we were asked actually for a three years follow-up, and we were granted the money. But you have to remember that funders, for while they were giving you the 1.8 million for three years follow-up, they're looking for a result at that stage, and then reviewing whether you actually need a five years follow-up or not. If, because the story will be completely different if we find inferior results at one year, then probably we will not proceed for the three years follow-up. If the results of the systematic review are concurred in that trial, then probably there is no need for longer follow-up. However, we believe that there are, or I believe, and my colleagues in the SPFN, we believe that there are better performing single incision slings that if they are taken out of the context of lumping together, they can be an advantage for the patients. Thank you. Please go ahead. Pallavi Latte from uh, Birmingham in UK. Mohammed. Sorry, Lati, can you wave where you are? <laughs> oh, here we go. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, 
So for the uh, clinicians, your advice still is to use uh, your single incision slings in the context of research and not just in routine clinical practice. Am yes. I right? I, st I still conclude that, or I still recommend that it's within the context of research. There are, significant, there are high trends towards better outcome of standard medieval slings that could not be ignored. Thank you.